Hello and welcome to the video. This is the latest video in the FPV Antenna Lab series. If you haven't watched any of the other videos, then go and have a look. It's there to dispel some of the myths and misconceptions about how antennas work and talks a lot about the differences between linear, circular, polarized, how dB relates to power, how you double your range, how you do all those great things. Now, last time we had a look at this graph and what it was to test was to see how the signal dropped off when you rotated linear antenna out of phase compared with circular polarized antennas and the results were pretty startling. The amount of signal received from the linear antennas dropped off in more or less a straight line as it was rotated out of phase where the circular polarized antenna actually kept great signal as it flopped around and that's why we use these things circular polarized antennas on the majority of our models. We've also talked in the series about why using things like linear antennas, the kind of things like this that we have on top of our radios, are actually great for things like tiny whoops, where you're not flipping and flopping about. And by having linear antennas on both the receiving uh, FPV goggles and your model makes it a really great situation. But I had a really good question on one of the last videos, which is, well, hang on a minute. If circular polarized antennas are so good, why don't we have circular polarized antennas on the top of our radios? And that is a really, really good question. So in this one, with the help of Greg at Menace RC, so a big thank you to Greg at Menace. Uh, Greg is the person who makes the antennas that I use pretty exclusively here, unless I'm using Crossfire. So if you are interested in kind of replicating these results, then go and have a look at the Menace RC website. The link is down below. So to test this, the first thing to do is to kind of get some cold hard data. So what I asked Greg to do uh, was to get two linear antennas the same distance apart and then two circular polarized antennas the same distance apart in perfect orientation and to see how much more signal was received using a linear antenna. Because if a circular polarized is really that good, then why don't we change all of our antennas on the radios over to circular polarized? So we're just going to compare a couple of linear antennas um, with a couple of circular polarized antennas to see if there's an actual difference in the gain between the two. Um, we'll pop it onto the test rig here. So this is the two linears. We've set the frequency to 5650 because I tested the antennas and found that 5650 is covering all these antennas. The two linears are slightly out of tune, but to get a good comparative measurement, we went with 5650. What we will do is on here, so it's 5650, we will um, calibrate. So we've zeroed the system. So now this is a zero. Um, field test so we will then add the other antennas on and it should tell us the difference in gain between the two sets of antennas so let's swap these over So with the circular antennas on, we're seeing a gain which is 1.6 dB lower than two linear antennas. So there we have it. The difference actually isn't that much. It's very similar. It's only a difference of about 1.6 dB, which is in the scheme of things isn't much at all. But that does mean then that as the linear antennas rotate out of phase, that it's not going to take much rotation, about 20, 25 degrees, before the received signal from a pair of circular polarized antennas is actually going to work better. Because, as I mentioned at the beginning, actually looking at that stuff, you can see that as you move linear antennas out of phase, you do lose signal. So there are instances with two linear antennas and two circular polarized antennas, if the linear antenna is way out of alignment, that you're actually going to get more signal out of a pair of circular polarized antennas for radio control. 
So why don't we use it like that? Well, there's a couple of good reasons, and we'll get into that in the next slide. But circular polarized antennas are used a lot in communications already. So it's not like there isn't a precedent for using this stuff when you want to communicate. One of the big differences is going to be the size of the antenna. Now, this is the kind of antenna that we have for 5.8 gigahertz regular good old FPV. As we go down to the 2.4 gigahertz that things like our radios use, then the antenna has to be about twice the size. So the antenna, rather than being this size, is going to be an awful lot bigger and a little bit clumsier. If you go down to something like Crossfire, whether using 868, 915, those kind of uh, frequencies as opposed to gigahertz, then the elements need to be five times longer because the active elements in an antenna need to be uh, a whole divisible of the wavelength, which basically means that it has to have a physical relationship between the wavelength. So as the wavelengths get longer, the elements get longer that you need in your antenna. So we would need a significantly bigger antenna than this, but those are around because lots of people who are flying things like Crossfire use 2.4 gigahertz FPV for longer range. Now, there's a great website that Martin Bart has here. I'll put a link in the description. You can go and have a look at this that explains the difference between how the radio waves propagate from linear antennas, where it can sit up and down or left and right, through circular polarized antennas, where it almost goes like a corkscrew through the air. I'd recommend if you're interested in this, go and have a look at that. It's a bit technical as you get further down, but it's a really good example with some beautiful graphics of how it all works. And Martin is a very, very clever chap. But what it does show is that actually, as far as the radio is concerned, it doesn't matter whether you're using a circular polarized antenna or something like a linear antenna. The way that the radio waves propagate through the air is exactly the same. So there are a couple of things that would change the range that you'd get. And those things are things like the antenna alignment that we've already talked about, but also the transmission power and the actual antenna sensitivity. The more power you use or the more sensitive antennas you use, the more signal you're going to receive and the longer range you'll get for that power. So in summary, what does all that mean? Well, in summary, it means that if you did use circular polarized antennas, you'd have to have one of these on your model, um, and that is going to be an awful lot bigger than the little stubby things that you get on free sky receivers, and you'd have to have one on your radio as well, and they'd both be significantly bigger than this because they're running at the 2.4 gigahertz band, not 5.8 that this little FPV antenna runs on. The difference between two linear antennas and two circular polarized antennas is actually really close. Surprisingly close, I thought it would be more than that. So again, thank you to Greg at Menace for doing the testing. But it does mean that there could be potentially instances where you were using a linear antenna and you could, if you were severely out of alignment with the uh, transmission antenna, circular polarized would work better. However, in reality, we have diversity on the majority of receivers. So you mount those antennas usually at a kind of a 45 degree angle. And that means that as the craft moves around, one of the antennas is always moving into alignment with the antenna on your radio. And antenna placement on the model is a really crucial part to make sure that you get really good range. But there could be a place, if you're going to be flipping and rolling and antenna placement is a disaster, then maybe there could be a place for using much bigger circular polarized antennas on your radio and your model. And if you know anybody that's doing that, then do let me know. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.